Finish has got a series where they want to tell stories with revived series doctors, but they have been unable to get the revived series actor doctor in question in order to tell those stories, so they just think sod it, they're Chronicles instead. For a few years, we had the Ninth Doctor Chronicles. This is before Eccleston joined the Annals of Big Finish. We also had the Tenth Doctor Chronicles once again before... Uh, before David Tennant joined Big Finish. So now we just have the 11th and 12th Doctor Chronicles where Jacob Dudman works as incredible magic as an incredibly gifted, um, as, a, as a really gifted impressionist voicing uh, Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi's incarnations of the Doctor. We've had quite a few 11th Doctor sets, but now we have an upcoming quartet of box sets, the 11th Doctor Chronicles, where Jacob Dudman is going to be retiring from doing these impressions for Big Finish. He's going to be retiring from Big Finish and he's going out in a quartet of Big Finish box sets. And the first one has just been released. We've got Geronimo, which uh, Alfie Shaw is the basically the showrunner of the of the 11th Doctor Chronicles. And we've got a trilogy of stories here. We've got The Inheritance by Alfie Shaw, The House of Masks by Georgia Cook, and The End by Roshanna Patel. We've got a brand new companion here as well. This is Valerie Lockwood, played by Sophia Ingar. And Valerie is a cyborg from the 54th century. 54th century Earth, she has got cybernetic components and metal arms and stuff. And she is joining the 11th Doctor in adventures that take place between the events of the snowmen and the bells of saint john where the 11th doctor is becoming a little bit of a hermit where he's trying to track down clara oswin oswald the the woman twice dead the impossible girl and these are the series of adventures that are going to take place between series seven part one and series seven part two so we have 12, potentially 13 episodes which are being released over the coming years. This story arc looks set to conclude in February 2024. But we do have some details of the next one as well called All of Time and Space. But let's just talk about Geronimo for now. Three stories which find the 11th Doctor starting out in this oil rig that's like underneath the crust of Earth. We have a society here where cybernetic components are the norm however they are not the cybermen and it is run by arabella hendrix played by lara lemon who is this artificial intelligence who has been running this oil rig for centuries this like mini society underneath earth in this strange little hub society and we meet valerie lockwood and her mother patricia lockwood as well played by mandy simmons and basically the 11th doctor has a very fun introduction to valerie here turning up at her front door holding a bomb which he really really wants to disarm however after the death of her friend's father and then her friend due to this strange virus that has no cure that is making its way through this society under the earth the doctor and valerie are summoned by arabella to try and fight to try and figure out a cure try and find out what's happening let's play a clip from the inheritance to oversee the corporation in perpetuity. However, if we don't squash this untraceable killer, I doubt it'll last that long. That's why you're both here. Wait, you want me to work with him? Is that a problem? I... No, not if, not if you want me to, but he's... Despite his appearance and attitude, Oy. the Doctor is a genius. The genius, in fact. He saved this planet and countless others on numerous occasions. If anyone can cure this plague, it's him. Well... Thanks very much. Right. Okay, but then... What has this got to do with you? Yeah. S sorry. Not at all. According to the files, the Doctor works best when he has assistants. Since he managed to find his way to one of our top cybernetic engineers, who am I to ignore serendipity? I hope that's not a problem. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> top in the horse... <laughs> wow. Flattered to be asked. Um, although, if he's actually here to help... Try to blow you up? Mm. Yes. As difficult as this might seem, try not to let that worry you. Security is already investigating. We need the two of you focused on finding a cure. If you want my help, I'll need information. Valerie will be able to tell you all about it. Not about this. I need you to find someone. Clara Oswin Oswald. Or anyone with a combination of those names. Current records, historical records, whatever you've got. Conditions? Your file made you out to be a model altruist. Yes, well, it's very important I find her. Can you do it? Certainly. Deliver our secure and whatever information we have is yours. Thank you. There's a car waiting outside to take you to the hospital. Come back here as soon as you have any updates. 
I can't talk too much about The Inheritance without diving into spoilers, but I'm mainly going to do it as a point of comparison to last week's Big Finish box set that I reviewed, and that was Doctor Who Unbound Doctor of War Destiny. That title's a mouthful. But yeah, so I criticised that box set, that story, for having um, a pretty rote and ho-hum version of basically modern day capitalism where it's trying to talk about how dystopian is it isn't this alternative to capitalism absolutely so dystopian and then it was like no you're just describing capitalism the inheritance actually has a really good twist on money as a virus and i think that was such a really fun way to approach the story to give that plot point that sci-fi trope a brand new lease on life for this box set i thought that was a really interesting plot conceit but the main reason for the inheritance to exist is not only to set up this brand new plot arc between series 7 part 1 and series 7 part 2 where the 11th doctor is trying to track down clara oswald and despite the clip i just played it's not an overwhelming thing like the 11th doctor is not given the opportunity to find clara right now and uh, he has to like mourn over over it for several episodes or something no it is actually more of like a slight background detail that occasionally is an inciting incident but not something that the box set uses as a as a crutch which i really appreciated but this box set geronimo is mainly there to introduce valerie lockwood now i think that sophia ingar is such a terrific companion right out of the gate i think their performance is so endearing i think that they are not necessarily humble because they know that they're hot shit I, I think valerie has a really good opinion of herself but i do think that we we, we meet her or she's introduced to the 11th doctor kind of in the throes of grief and the 11th doctor is still kind of dealing with that from the time war and also saying goodbye recently to amy and rory and also losing clara in the snowmen as well i think they find that common ground it's not necessarily a position of humility, but I do think that Valerie is someone who kind of knows their limitations, but doesn't let that define them. And they also use that as a companion of the Doctor to position themselves in a place of empathy. And there's a lovely scene at the end of The House of Masks, which is the second story in this box set, where they do have the obligatory and the last of the Time Lords scene. And I adored it. I actually think it's it's better than what we've seen at like you know, in the end of the world in Gridlock. I think that it's such a wonderful way to frame that revelation that at this point in the doctor's history pre the day of the doctor you kind of have to have with a companion and i think the house of masks in geronimo does this the best people in the uh, chat as well talking about jacob dubman as the 11th doctor he's terrific i think that his it's i think it overall it, it is his best impression at least the best impression of his that i've heard from big finish but he's so natural in this i think he gets better the more he does it and by the time i was like two minutes into the inheritance it was like that that's not an impressionist anymore that is just matt smith and for some reason he's working under a pseudonym this jacob dudman guy who uh, does all the interviews for this box set it's weird but for some reason matt, matt smith didn't want his name to geronimo yeah i thought he was amazing and he channels matt smith so well and matt smith in, in in this place and his timeline as well where he is a little bit more a little bit more downbeat but he does still have that energy he does still have that fire of the doctor I thought he was terrific in it as well. But this is, for all intents and purposes, Sophia Ingar's show. And they are wonderful. I think that they are a terrific contrast to the kissogram from the village that time forgot with Amy Pond. And the impossible girl plot point the woman twice dead with, um, with Clara Oswald. I think that they are someone who... You couldn't mistake them for Amy Pond. You couldn't mistake them for Clara. But they still contrast and complement the 11th doctor as a companion so well the jury's obviously still out as to how are they going to be broadly as a companion across four box sets 12 or 13 episodes obviously the jury's still out in a totality sense but in terms of a first impression it's brilliant i think valerie's great and i think sophia is is great they big finish have had a really good run when it comes to original companions you know evelyn smythe from the sixth doctor hebe harrison quite recently once again with the sixth doctor and now with uh with valerie in geronimo but yeah i really liked the inheritance there's a really uh there's a really emotional death scene in the story as well i was like welling up listening to it it's performed so earnestly it's so grim it is genuinely emotional and quite upsetting. 
it's a really great box set. There's some really cool teasers as to who is actually behind the virus, which will be, I imagine, which will be sorted out and resolved in future box sets. But it's a nice little dangling carrot to, to tease people, to get them to, to go for the adventure for the long haul. But in terms of an actual inciting incident story, the inheritance is terrific. And Thomas Ahern is Sophia Ingar non-binary. Yes, they are. They are non-binary. However, Valerie is canonically, go, they go by she, her pronouns. If I'm mixing up my genders, I apologize, but I'm trying to keep it consistent. Where I'm referring to the actor as they, them, and the character as she, her. Inheritance terrific story i think it is the best story of the box set it starts really really strong however the house of masks by georgia cook is a great follow-up as well this is another great story i've not been super big on recent big finnish historicals but the house of masks takes place in carnival times uh, in venice hundreds of years ago and it's a nice little sequel kind of to the vampires of venice whereas they're able to show that the 11th doctor is like oh i've been here before but this isn't a morning amy and rory situation this is just somewhere the tardis has taken us during carnival let's put on the masks let's go to this party and i love how they get the exposition across for uh, i love how they get the exposition across for the doctor and valerie they get taken to separate places and valerie meets this guy who says okay i'm planning to kill this person i need to kill this person by the stroke of midnight and the doctor also is taken to one side and said this person has promised to kill me at the stroke of midnight can you save me i thought that was so novel but let's play a quick clip you must forgive my theatrics doctor I'm sure you understand. My guest's comfort is of the utmost importance. Oh, soul of discretion, me. Never not discreet. I'll be plain, Doctor. A man wishes me dead. Wishes aren't a problem, my lady. Question is, do you think he could actually do it? I'm quite certain of it. The palazzo walls have so far kept him at bay, yet I fear he has made his way inside. His name is Captain Tomasi. And he has made his desires in this matter quite clear. I am to die before the clocks strike midnight. That's awfully specific. What happens at midnight? What else? The end of Carnival. Interesting. A killer with a sense of time. He knows it will cause me great pain to destroy this ball. Seems a lot of trouble to upset a party. Most people just complain about the food. He desires not only my death, but also the ruin of my reputation. He falsely believes I have stolen this palazzo from him. And, just to check, did you? Absolutely not. This is my home, not his. It's a really cool historical where, you know, the first part of the story, the first half of the House of Masks is basically the Doctor and Valerie infiltrating a party, finding out what's going on and who's who. Uh, and you know something's not quite right about it the guests are a little bit repetitive they don't seem to have that much in the way of personality everybody's wearing masks and they're you know, yeah it's it's a little bit who done it but we already know who done it because the audience have seen both sides of the conversation with the with valerie and the doctor but it takes a twist it takes a turn halfway through where basically who is who who the good guy is who the bad guy is is upended to some really interesting sci-fi directions i obviously won't spoil it but it's a really thought-provoking ending it's basically talking about artificial intelligence and talking about the morality of the needs of the many the needs of the few what does it mean to preserve somebody's legacy really interesting big idea sci-fi stuff but it's still glossed up with the th this um, historical Venice Carnival setting. I thought it was really novel. It's just a really interesting way to tell a story, or tell a historical story of this nature. I think the performances are like off the charts good. Who you heard there, that was Lady Sakura played by Genevieve Gaunt. She's terrific. She's absolutely outstanding in this story. Both, uh, oh, no, I can't spoil it. But also that reminds me, Laura Lemon in The Last Story, The Inheritance, playing Arabelle Hendricks terrific performance great performances just across the boards here nicholas briggs was the director of the box set he's able to get incredible performances out of the actors they're all terrific across the board so yeah house of masks i can't dive too deep into it unfortunately but i will say and i mentioned this earlier the revelations at the end where the doctor does the i'm the last of the time lord speech to valerie 
And it's wonderfully portrayed. It's so well done. I loved everything about it. And I think if you were to like have it side by side with you know the equivalent scene between Nine and Rose and the end of the world, between Ten and Martha and Gridlock, I think this like trumps it all. I not not saying it's a competition, but it is just that level of character depth and dialogue and performance and the cast just knock it out of the park and there's a fun reference to casanova apparently owing apparently the doctor owing casanova a chicken because he helped him to thwart some sontarans or something once again some fun vampires of venice references and callbacks but in terms of novel ways to tell a story, we now find ourselves at The End by Roshanna Patel. And going through the actual plot description on the Big Finish website, Valerie slash the Doctor is dying. Only the Doctor slash Valerie can save Valerie slash the Doctor. But for her slash him to survive, the Doctor slash Valerie will have to die in her slash his place. For the Doctor slash Valerie, this is Journey's End. So... From that plot description, you're probably wondering, why all the typos, Mr. Tardis? But no, it's not. Uh, to quote the Doctor from the Bells of St. John, that's a surprisingly accurate description. Oh, and Georgia Cook's in the chat. I'm the writer of House of Masks. It just popped over, and I'm so pleased to enjoy it. First things first, uh, thank you for being here, Georgia. I don't know how you knew about my live stream, or if you've been in the chat this whole time. I apologize, but yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah, House of Masks was terrific. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not normally the biggest fan of Doctor Who historicals. That's a me problem, by the way. That's that's a me problem, not a Doctor Who historicals problem. But yeah, I thought it was terrific. I loved the, no spoilers, I did love the twists that it took towards the end, the second half. Love it. The Doctor and Valerie land on a ship that is being... Uh, attacked by time spiders and time spiders are these creatures um, they give you a little bite and then they kill you and they are creatures that exist within the time vortex and because the time lords have gone normally they keep them in check but because they're gone they're now able to breed and multiply and the doctor has to stop them however the end takes place across two multiple time streams one version where valerie gets bitten by the time spider and is dying and the doctor has to save them and then another time stream where the doctor is bitten by the time spider and valerie has to save him so what we've got is that we have these two plot strands happening concurrently and we have one scene where valerie is dying and the doctor has to save them and then from we have a sound effect and then it cuts to another scene of the roles have been reversed and i love the the nuances of the performance where the jacob dudman as, as the 11th doctor is he obviously he wants to survive but the drive and the motivation to save valerie tr trumps anything when it comes to his own self-preservation i love that he is more committed and invested in saving valerie as opposed to saving himself but let's play a qu uh, let's play a quick clip from the end and you'll hear one of these transitions in action Come on, soldier. Back on your feet. <sighs> Not a soldier. I'll get him to med bay. I trained as a med tech back in the day. I can hook him up. You two need to figure out a solution to this. Us? What are we supposed to do? Improvise. Because you know who's good at devising practical solutions to impossible problems? Engineers. You may have given up the day job, but you've still got the skills. Mm. Okay, here's a question. Could we redirect the coolant from the condenser units and flood the reactor chamber? Flash freeze everything in there. Oh, yeah, I like it. Let's go take a look, eh? Get Valerie's medibed into that escape pod. It will take days for a rescue vessel to arrive. She won't last that long. She just needs to be clear of the blast radius. If everything goes to plan, I'll swing about in the TARDIS, pick her up and get her to a medical facility. And if things don't go to plan? Well, that's why I want you with her. If I fail, I don't want her facing her last moments in Can you do that for me? Of course. She's my patient. So yeah, it's not the best and most informative clip. I just wanted to show how one of these transitions works when listening to the end. Uh, I think that Roshanna Patel's script, uh, being able to, you know, the subtle character differences between these two time streams, these two versions of Valerie the Doctor, is the thing that differentiates the end more than your basic 
based on the siege story i think if it wasn't for that narrative and structural conceit this would be you know a little bit ho-hum but that little detail that extra added oomph to the narrative does make the end a really memorable based on the siege story even though the time spiders are by nature a little bit bland as villains you know the sound design is doing a lot of the heavy lifting and the fact that they are apparently creatures that literally weaved the web of time you know spiders haha so yeah, it's it's an interesting story. I do think that um, it, because it is a bog standard based under seed story, it can only go so far. I think it's got one hell of a climax, though. I think when it comes to how the time streams finally come together and the narrative plays its hand as to which version of events came first or which one came once it's done all of that stuff that's really really interesting but it is a base under siege story it is a story where so there's something from the outside and you've got some decently characterized but not particularly memorable people who are on board this spaceship that's being attacked by the spiders it's you know that stuff is all fine but I do think that when you compare it to something like The Inheritance, something like The House of Masks, where it's doing the different structure and is also excelling everywhere else, I think the end, you know, that's not to, like, try and downplay the end. I do think Roshana Patel has done a really interesting job here. And like I said, the third act kills it. But I do think that leading up to the third act, the main thing that has, the main thing going for the end is those is the divergent plot strands maybe that's enough though it's only a 55 minute story it's a really strong hour of sci-fi but either way i think that the geronimo box set is like a, a home run it is easily the best 11th doctor stuff that i've heard from big finish i do think that geronimo overall is like maybe a top five box set of the year for me the only reservations that i would have in terms of recommending this to people is you know are you an, an 11th doctor fan or not if you if you don't like the 11th doctor if you love the revived series of doctor who but you consider the matt smith era to be a bit of a wobble then, you know, Geronimo is not for you. But if you do like the Matt Smith era, this is like a an unambiguous recommendation. I think Geronimo is so strong as a first three episodes into a side series of, you know, series seven part two now. Now we have to call... Um, now we have to call the Bells of St. John up until the name of the Doctor Series 7 Part 3 now. Apologies, that's just how that's how the law works now. But in terms of a Series 7 Part 2, this is such a strong start. I think the Doctor and Valerie are such a terrific pairing where you're not treading across the same common ground because Valerie is such a fun and interesting character who complements and contrasts with the 11th Doctor so well. I think the character is a triumph and I think of Sophia Ingar... Uh, has just really come so strong out of the gates here. Jacob Dudman is doing his best work that I have heard so far in terms of playing the 11th Doctor, really adding some great pathos and nuance here. Yeah, Geronimo is an unambiguous home run for Big Finish. I think this is one of their strongest releases for quite a while, easily top five of the year, I think. If this does not make my top five for 2022, then this has been an incredibly strong year for Big Finish. I'll put it that way. Like I said, if you're not a fan of the 11th Doctor, you can give Geronimo a skip. But if you do like Matt Smith's incarnation of the Doctor, if you do like this era of the show, then Geronimo gets a, saying it loud with my whole chest, massive recommendation. Geronimo was terrific. I think you should fully dive in.